We want, to, we want material that basically engages Australians and um, gets them interested. So we want material that is targeted towards 16 to 30 year old um, people, basically, Australians. Um, okay, so what I thought we'd start off with is, um, I, I, I thought the, to get to the basics, I thought what we should start off is um, visual journalism. Because you've all accomplished in your own way in print and radio, but how do we make what we've done for radio and print um, really good for TV and make it sing? Um, I mean, as any sort of university lecturer from, you know, that does TV journalism, however good they are, they sort of say you've got to write to the pictures and um, whether you're going to be doing serious stuff or non-serious stuff, I'm going to be teaching sort of serious techniques and how to do serious journalism because I'm not a comedian and I'm not a satirist. So I'm going to let you can take down whatever you want and you can take these notes and you can run with them for whatever you want. But I'm going to be training you all in you know basic principles of television journalism and you know making your visual material rock. So um, a lot of you have done radio. And um, and that's good. I mean, and some of it I've heard you utilise the sound really good in the in the field. Good television or good visual journalism uses um, pictures to um, to drive the story along. And I think that's um, looking at some of the samples of video that I've seen that people have done. That um, that has been a little bit lacking. Um, you, um, you know, establishing shots of generic cars, and, you know, cars pushing past and stuff. It's a really boring way to start a story. And what you should be endeavouring to do is really get the best pictures you possibly can um, so that you've got a good starting point because that's the general rules of, you know, TV, starting with your best pictures. You know, if you look at war correspondents, they start off with bombs and, and havoc. Um, you know, I mean, you look at the 7.30 report, the, you know, the political correspondents, um, when they, um, they sort of, um, you know, they, they start off by making the walk-ins and stuff look sexy with fast editing and stuff. And sure, you know, they've got really good editors at their disposal, but they basically start these um, videos and try to make them really compelling from the start. So, um, what you guys should be striving for is, like, boring pictures to me are just you know, cars on a road, people riding at a desk. If you're going to be following people like campaigning for an election, you should be getting them doing the campaigning. Like, you know, um, if you look at shows like Australian Story and really good documentaries, the stuff that people remember, uh, you know, what's called actuality, people doing real things. So if you are, you know, going to follow a candidate or follow someone, uh, the way I sort of go about getting those good pictures is sort of saying, well, what are you doing today? You know, what, what, what do you, what, what do you, um, what, what, what do you, um, you know, what, what do you do? Like, just not, because, I mean, it's very easy to film, and it's a very common thing that the ABC does when they don't have a lot of time, is to film somebody writing at their desk and go, academic, academic Joe blogs, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. So, it's so boring, and I think if we're giving you the opportunity to do two snappy, two minutes or less, we can really strive to do something better. You know, even, you know, a candidate driving around in his weird truck is more, it, it says more. Um, it, I'm sorry, I've just got to add someone again. Sorry. Sorry, guys. We are recording this, aren't we? Yeah. Um, so, so, yeah, I mean, start off, look, the key to really good vision, and I know it's a really dumb thing to say, is to really hunt for the best pictures you possibly can and sort of find, um, you, you know, um, find pictures that maybe show someone that you don't expect them to be doing something like that. And, and I, you know, and I know that, you know, some politicians do, you know, go to school and climb on play equipment. I mean, that's sort of great vision, you know? Like, watching Abbott climbing his thing with the kids is always a really good photo and all, a really good piece of video. Yeah, um, Actually, as long as he's not wearing his budgie smugglers. As long as that. Oh, but even him and his budgie smugglers is arousing for some people. But, um, 
Anyway, so um, when you're hunting for when you when you're hunting for video, you know, video, you should really be striving to um, you should be really striving to you know hunt out what is the best pictures. You know, if someone is at an art centre and they're graffitiing on the wall, that you know, a tight shot of them graffitiing on the wall is you know a really good start to take someone to a place. So um, that's what I sort of do whenever I start a new story. I go. Shit, how can I put people in? It's, it's the hook that really gets people going. Now, um, you know, with writing, um, I think that was a bit, looking at some of your videos and some of the stuff, your words should add value to the pictures. Um, it's something that's often forgotten. You don't have to paint a scene with flowery adjectives like you do in print. Um, but I think you've got to value add to what the picture is doing um, to make, to drive the story along. Um, so in short, you know, don't say what pictures do, say what they don't. Um, you know, imagine a murder, um, imagine a murder in a neighbourhood that's taken place, there's police cars outside with lights flashing, um, and you know, the, the basic scene when you see any sort of crime report, you know, a really bad example of writing, a really shitty way to start the story would be to say, you know, police lights flash across the suburb, or something like that. I've, seen, I've heard the channels can report to do that. I mean, you can see the cars and the lights flashing. I mean, you don't have to, you're just wasting words. If you've got two minutes, you've got to make those That's words really count. And really common in TV. Like, all over the foreign correspondence, you'll see them, you'll hear the yeah. bombs are falling over Baghdad again. Yeah, and the show of the explosion. Yeah, I, all the time. I, I, I think that might be the place of it, that might be the place of it. There's certain places where that has, if you're putting your person in the sense of location, it, it can work really well. But um, overall, like, I mean, in a crime scene, which is such a common thing to sort of say sirens are flashing. It, you can see that, you know, you, you sort of say something along the lines of, say something that adds value, like, um, this is the third murder on this street in four days. You know, that's a, that's a stronger opening and it adds value to what the pictures, you can see that the cops are there and, you know, it's a crime scene. So, you, you know, your pictures tell half the story. So, um, you, it's something that um, you really have to consider whether you're doing, you know, um, comical pieces. If you're going to be taking us to, you know, seats, we don't have to go, with, you know, if you see, ch you know, Chinese signs everywhere, you don't need to say this is a really ethnic neighbourhood, you know. Um, <laughs> it's just a common thing that I sort of see in writers when they start uh, um, um, summing their scripts. Um, so, if, another example, um, you know, if you had a Labor candidate campaigning on the streets of Newtown here in Sydney, which is a, a funky suburb, um, the, and, and the camera pans from the candidate to a sign saying Newtown, um, don't go, you know, Joe Bloggs is running for the ALP in Newtown. That's, you know, that's a bit of a der brainer. Try something, you can shorten it by going something like Labor candidate Joe Bloggs is fighting for his political life in conservative Albury or conservative Newtown, even though the Newtown's not conservative. Say, mate, it's commentary, it's, and that's what your writing should do. It should, um, it should add value to, it should add value to what is going on with, um, you know, with the pictures. So does that all make sense, or is that something that is of use to people, or is that, does that, yep. is that something that, you sort of feel within your own work when you're doing radio stories, you sometimes overdo that aspect to your writing. Yes, absolutely. So, I had a great yeah. example. My friend, um, a friend of mine picked me up on an article I'd written about fighting the whole battle, this refugee camp. Mm. It was a, 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 when the fighting broke out and people were quick to flee. Mm. And it's like, no shit. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, <laughs> people don't generally hang around and get shy, but they can avoid it. Like. Well, what I've what also just said was if a friend was covering... Um, well, oh, this was my story. My friend like, pointed out, like, Austin, why have you written this? Okay, yeah, well, um, Austin wrote a story that talked about people fleeing from the centre of Lebanon and he described what was happening. Sometimes it can work, especially with you know, good us. Uh, but, you, um, you, you know, um, you, things like saying, you know, the streets of Lebanon are fast deserting are pretty self-evident in the pictures. So, I uh, just... You know, you've only got two minutes, it's not a lot of writing, so it's just a consideration for you all when you're going about writing these scripts. It's, 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 it
And, and, and when you're emailing them in, because um, I'll be I'll be I'll be having a look at your scripts and how you're writing. Um, just make sure you know I'll, I'll be pointing out these things so you don't make those mistakes. But it's something that is a common mistake that's done when you're starting out in TV. Um, just very quickly, if I can, yeah, go back to the point you're making about um, compelling visuals. One of the things that State Line in particular does quite effectively um, is they get footage from sort of when just at the start of you know door stops or press conferences or whatever when everyone's sort of still a bit joking yeah. still a bit you know uh, not quite in full you know serious mode um, and it can actually make really quite interesting television to see sort of politicians off their guard yeah well like, uh, I'll I'll just, uh, uh, did you all hear that or did I, should I convey that again no um what Shan one of our Sydney guys was saying was um in New South Wales the ABC version of State Line a visual technique that they do that's really effective is capturing that sort of flavour before the doorstop starts, where people are chatting, and and it's also something that's done by the seven thirty report at times. You know, getting getting you know the ridiculous size of a press pack for something that's completely stupid. Is you know like um you know Ben Cousins in Melbourne. I mean fuck, I'm sick of the guy. Um, but um you know I mean the people subtle editors subtly because they think it's a circus. They suddenly put in the big scrums about Ben Cousins coming back to Richard, Richmond to just show how ludicrous sort of the circus is when you know football players announce that they took a sleeping tablet or something like that. And it's a technique, I mean, I don't mind that. It's an idea that you guys should use when you're developing these stories. How do I set up what has just happened? What gives me a flavour of a seat? You know, what